So AMD really is gonna need to lower prices on their lower end chips, especially that 5600X, because we're getting a full review, it looks like, leaked over here at Chip Hell Forums. And it's in, uh, looks like Chinese to me. Uh, yeah, Chinese simplified. And I can Google translate this into English to try to get some idea of what's going on here. Now there's two full reviews. We've got the uh, Core i5-12400, which is a six core 12 thread Alder Lake chip that doesn't have any of the efficiency cores. But then we've also got a full review leaked on the 12100 and the 12300. And they're gonna place uh, in these reviews, these uh, four core chips, which is what these are, these are four core chips, up against uh, the only Zen 3 AMD four core chip that we have, which is what is it like the 5350G or something, something like that. We'll see it uh, the exact number in, in the benchmarks. Um, but then also the 12400 we'll see up against Intel's 5600X. And the price points of these chips are just completely different. Um, although currently the motherboards for the Alder Lake platform are more expensive, although we should see at CES 2022 starting to get some of the uh, you know cheaper model boards. We don't don't need everything to be a Z690 coming soon. Anyway, so I'm interested to see how AMD ends up responding to this. And again, this is a Google Translate here, but um, they're showing off the chips here. I believe these are all qualification samples, not engineering samples. So they should be pretty much equivalent to what we see in the um, final release of these uh, consumer chips. Although it does look like there's a couple different versions of this 12400. There's an HO and a CO, and they don't seem to perform that different, but I'm curious which one is actually more similar to the final release product. But again, in the benchmarks, it doesn't seem to make much of a difference. Anyway, so we get a bunch of synthetic benchmarks as well as a bunch of um, gaming benchmarks. And it's really interesting to see how these do. Uh, because of the massive price difference. So I'm gonna link this if you wanna take a closer look at all of the details. I'm not gonna just read through the entire thing, but here we jump into the um, actual like uh, performance charts, right? So ah, I'm gonna shrink myself down. So again, this is looking at the six core chips. So we're looking at the 12600K um, uh, and the 12400. Along with the 5600X, notice that they are using PBO. And that, that's good to see because most people would be using PBO. And so it would be unfortunate if we saw a review without PBO. Although I think that can uh, increase the power draw on it. And we'll see that the power draw and heat on these Intel chips is actually quite good. Um, which is not necessarily what we saw at the um, higher end of the Alder Lake charts. Uh, so we'll, and we also see it up against the 5600G and the uh, 11400 here. And you can see in Cinebench R20, um, the uh, 12600K obviously dominant here. We already know how that one performs, but the 12400 is ahead of the 5600X using PBO, as well as significantly ahead of the 5600G and the 11400. Mm -hmm. So very interesting. If we look at Cinebench R23, once again, we see that same stack, right? S same orders, same performance. And again, I'll link this if you wanna uh, look, but uh, 3D Mark Time Spy. We're once again seeing it down in this order with the 12400 uh, in this one with a significant lead over the 5600X running a PBO. And again, the 12400 is like almost half the price of a 5600X, depending on the exact, um, you know, <laughs> uh, exact price you get it at in the market. Although we'll see how the 12400 fares with supply and availability when it first launches. Once again, Time Spy Extreme, here we go with the uh, same stack happening here. Not quite as big of a gap on this one. Um, this is the 4K game performance test, right? So, and again, I'm relying on some Google Translates here to figure out exactly what we're looking at here. Um, so this one looks like, uh, this is the Fire Stri Strike Extreme DX11 4K. Um, and in this one, we're seeing the 5600X PBO pull a little bit ahead of the 12400. Okay, but that is on a 4K DX11 test. Now, there's a lot of tests here, so I'm not gonna like comment through all of them. I think we might just kind of scroll down here. But what I wanna jump into to is the temperature power consumption and, and all of that. So it's looking to me 
like if I'm reading this right, I think this is temp, no, this is watts. Okay, so this is power draw. I'm assuming W is watts. It's looking like the 12400, now here's where the HO version and the CO version have some slight differences, but it seems relatively small. But it looks like while they're drawing about the same amount of wattage as a 5600G, it looks like the 5600X running PBO is drawing significantly more power. So that's really interesting. It's doing this at much less power draw than the 5600X. And the uh, 12400 uh, chips here, I believe this is, let's see, does it tell us here? This is temperature and power consumption shown. Okay, so I think this is temperature and this one was, was power consumption. So I, I'm a, I, I don't read Chinese, but I, I think, I think this is temperature and lower is better here. So their 5600X PBO is running all the way up at 86 degrees, if I'm correct on this being temperature, uh, with the 12400s coming in at 58 and 60 degrees. Um, interesting, <laughs> okay. Uh, and then again, if any of you actually speak Chinese and, and can point out any, if I make any mistakes on my translations and understanding what these are here, let me know. I think this, this must be some kind of uh, yeah, memory latency in nanoseconds. Uh, doesn't look like any huge differences here, although the 11400 actually seems to be doing the best here. But now we're getting into the gaming performance test, which is where I'm mostly interested in these chips is as a budget gaming CPU. And we can see here that C uh, in CSGO, the 5600X is outperforming the 12400 fairly significantly. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is I think that CSGO is a game that likes L3 cache, and that's something that the 5600X, uh, to my knowledge, does significantly beat the 12400 in, is the L3 cache, and I think that that's why we're seeing this outperforming score here in CSGO, and some other games will prefer it too, so we will see some wins here. Um, again, here, uh, now this one, this is the Blockade 2. I'm assuming this is probably the Division 2, uh, notice the blue bar is 1080p, the orange bar is, is 2K, so 1440p. I hate when people call it 2K, but anyway, uh, <laughs> that's beside the point. So we're seeing, um, I guess it's the Division 2, and in this one it's looking like, while well, the 12400 wins, it is fairly close. And then it looks like we got Shadow of the Tomb Raider DX12 presets highest picture quality. Okay, 1080p and 2K. And in this one, uh, things are looking fairly even here. I'm wondering if because they're running at the highest picture quality that we're somewhat GPU bound in this situation. Uh, so I wonder maybe why they used the higher, highest picture quality setting for this test. But we do see the 12400 slightly, although I'd call that basically a tie uh, with the 5600X PBO. Uh, here we have Watchdog Legion uh, presets the highest picture quality. So again, relying on Google Translate here, but this, uh, and it's using the built-in demo, okay. And so in this one, once again, we're seeing them the fairly even, although at 1080p, the 12400 is taking a bit of a lead over the 5600X. But again, at the highest picture quality, I'm wondering if we're running into a bit of a GPU limit here. I would have liked to see it at low settings. Um, to force more of the CPU limit. Okay, now we've got Forza Horizon 4, it looks like. And in this one, we're seeing the 5600X PBO uh, a bit ahead of the 12400, but the 12400 still giving a good result. And then we've got Rainbow Six Siege, it looks like highest image quality, 100% rendering. Again, I'm wondering why for CPU tests, they're, they're using the highest settings. At 1080p though, um, it looks like we are still hitting mostly a CPU limit and the 5600X is winning. So he here's what it looks like to me overall uh, fr from all of this. It's looking like the 12400 is going to be a fantastic budget gaming chip. It's not that you can't get a better chip and arguably it doesn't look like a clear win in gaming over the 5600X. Maybe the 5600X is even better, but this is kind of my point. I think the 5600X is a fantastic gaming chip and it's looking to me like the 12400F uh, is going to do almost as well as a 5600X 
for significantly less price, and it also looks at lower temperatures and lower power draw, if I was reading those charts correctly. The current issue just being the motherboard pricing, um, but we should expect to see that come down as we get something cheaper than Z690s coming, uh, you know, hopefully in the near future. Now, a lot of you also comment, like, is it even fair to compare AMD against Intel when this is such a newer Intel chip and we'll see new AMD stuff coming out? Well, I want to see new AMD stuff coming out, but this is what we have right now. And um, I'm not so much into this as the like, who's winning, Intel or AMD? I'm into this more as I love to see this competition. And it looks like Intel is going to be offering a chip at a really aggressive price point that's going to deliver some really impressive performance. So I'm also going to jump over to, uh, I forgot, they still have a 12100 and a 12300. Now, I don't want this video to get way too long. So let's kind of scroll through this one a little bit quicker. So these are going to be even cheaper. Looks like they're still running on a high-end test system. Scroll down through that. I'll give you guys the actual uh, link to all this in the description of the video. So we've got basically... Here we're seeing it up against, from the AMD side, the 5350G, because I think that's the only four core eight thread Zen 3 uh, CPU that's out there. And then they've also got it up against a, a 3100. And if we, if we take a look, it looks like the Alder Lake chips here are just stomping all over everything else in the category. So at that absolute low end budget, uh, budget situation, and again, here we're seeing um, the uh, wattage and the temperatures, I believe. We're seeing here that, okay, it looks like in terms of power draw, at least at this level, it does look like the AMD chips might have the advantage on power draw, although it's not a huge difference, but that is something to keep in mind. And then it looks like we're seeing the, uh, what is this? This is the power, this does feel like, uh, this one's probably the temperature. Looking fairly even, it looks like the Alder Lake chips are winning on the temperature side of things. And then this is, again, the memory latency where it doesn't look like there's a huge difference other than the 3100 being slightly worse. Okay, in gaming performance, uh, it, again, just looks like in CSGO here, the Alder Lake chips are taking the big lead. And I think that's going to be the case in all of these. This one looks like Far Cry 6 and Alder Lake taking a huge lead. Uh, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Alder Lake taking a commanding lead. Watchdog Legion, Alder Lake taking a commanding lead. This one looks like, a, this is Forza Horizon 5. Was the other one really four? I wonder why they're using different games uh, than their other test. This one looks fairly even, so I'm wondering if they're um, actually CPU limited here because everything seems fairly even, although the Alder Lake chips are still in the lead. And then here we've got Rainbow Six Siege, where once again we see the Alder Lake chips in the lead. So I've got to say that for the low end segment, the four core eight thread se segment, um, Alder La Lake seems completely dominant. But I think the main reason here is that AMD hasn't really targeted that. They just have that like 5350G chip, which um, you know isn't the same thing as if you don't have the APU on it, right? So I'd like to see what AMD could have done there maybe, and at what how low of a price point. I'm curious if they'll have anything in this price bracket, because that's one of the main complaints I think about the 5000 series AMD chips is that they just don't have anything below that 5600X um, other than their APUs, which, you know, you may or may not be wanting the APU and paying more and getting less performance just to have that on there. This video is running long and it's snowing right now. I'm gonna go play outside with my kids. We actually get a white, well, not Christmas, but day after Christmas. So that's exciting. I hope all of you guys have an excellent day.